All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and welcome you guys to a fantastic model right here. Actually, this is made by a good buddy by name, Jerome, on Vancouver Island. He makes these things. And uh, they are the best models that I think I've seen for the spine. So a couple of things to start with. What do you see, number one? Obviously, what region of the body is this? Lumbar spine, right? How do we know that? Well, I can see the spatulated spinous processes, nice big ligamentum flavum, shape of the facets, and oh yeah, this little thing right here called the cauda equina. So just for basic orientation, when we're looking at this, these are your facet joints here. We can see the layers of the dura on the back here for the meninges. So what are the layers of the meninges again? It goes dura matter, arachnoid, pia matter, right? And I know that I'm at the cauda equina because this is not solid spinal cord. It's actually spinal nerves coming down into that space. All right. Why do I like this model so much? It shows you how things move in real life as close as we can get to a model I've ever seen. What do I see that ligamentum flavum? It stretches when I pull on it a little bit, right? So you can see a little bit of flexion happening there. You can see the disc absorbs a little bit of force when you go to squeeze it, of course. What else? If I look down from this end, and those of you guys who are over there will be able to see it, if I look down from this end, I can see into the vertebral body where I can see the nucleus palposus and the annulus fibrosus around the edge. And if I look at one region here in particular, I can see the redness on one side that indicates tears of the annulus fibrosus. What do I have to do before I herniate a disc? You have to sprain your back first. You have to tear the annulus fibrosus before the disc herniates out, right? What's the purpose of the intervertebral disc? What does it do again? Shock absorption. That means it's got to have a good intact annulus fibrosus to absorb that shock as the nucleus palposus gets squeezed. Now, the big thing I need people to see, number one, this space right here, what is that? where the spinal nerve comes out? IVF, IVF intervertebral foramen, right? We all know that. Okay, I need some of you guys in close so you can see this because this is the neat part. Okay, so can you guys all see into that space? Mm -hmm. I want us all to see into that space right there. That's a little bit of a tear. I'll do it more for the rest of you guys. There's a little bit of a tear in the annulus fibrosis right there at the back. Okay, so we can all see that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna load this disc into flexion. So if I squeeze the front of the disc, what happens? Mm -hmm. Boom. Wow. Okay, so you could all see that disc, I know, right? <laughs> okay, so you could see that disc herniation come out and it would compress the spinal nerve right there. Okay, and that's exactly, that is exactly what a disc herniation is. So if I decompress the spine, sometimes that disc herniation can actually suck back into place. All right, and slowly it's being reabsorbed right there. So again, a flexion twisting event is going to cause the herniation to bulge out, compress the spinal nerve, and then a, an event where I decompress the spine may make it go back into place. That's why this model is so... Uh, so interesting is the fact that you can actually see it really well like that. So we'll get you guys who saw it to step back. People who didn't see it, I want you guys to understand this, okay? Especially our power lifter crew, because this is this is happening to you guys right here. Okay? Cycle through. So where you want to see is right in there into the intervertebral foramen. Okay? So can every, everybody can see that. So I squeeze in, this is me loading, heavy weight, heavy weight. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We go back in. Okay. Okay. So spinal decompression will take it out. Okay, you guys cycle out. Next group comes in. Cycle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I know, man. This was this was the one for you from yesterday. I wanted you to get. Okay. So you're all looking right there at the little tear that's at the back of the at the back of the disc. You sprained your back right there, right? So here we go. Herniation's coming. Pop. Oh. Okay, and it bulges out. And normally the spinal nerve will be filling that space, so you would get the symptoms that you get with it. Dermatomal distribution of numbness and tingling. And it gives you numbness and tingling as soon as you do that. Or you cough or sneeze or strain and it goes <coughs> and it actually bulges out a little bit more each time you cough. So you've got a herniation that comes out. So what happens? The disc bulges out, the nucleus palposus is out into space. Now what's going to occur? Cells are going to come in and break down that ruptured damaged tissue. So the nucleus palposus is gone but the annulus fibrosis does have the capacity to heal a little bit, but it heals with a narrower disc space because you've lost some of your nucleus palposis. So it does heal, but you don't get the same kind of shock absorption ability out of it. What if it does? 100%, and we'll talk about that with you guys here in a little bit. Shablamo, all the way around. Boy, that's solid. Man, I don't like that thing. 